Every day I open up my phone, I'm constantly asking myself, surely the world couldn't get even more weird and crazy than it is today? But guess what? Sadly, this week was just like any other week because the first news headline that caught my attention of the week was the US Senate coming out and saying, guess what? We've solved inflation. We know how to squash this 9.1% inflation. We just need to print another $739 billion of money, but this time we're going to call it the Inflation Reduction Act, and then that'll just cure inflation, okay? But yeah, we're going to touch on that in today's video. And then we also had this article from The Economist come out and say, we're Western consumers, get ready because you need to eat the bugs. And of course, it wouldn't be a check-in on Clown World if we didn't check in on our favourite James Bond villain himself, Mr. Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum, because he came out this week and he said, guess what? Yeah, you know what? Owning your car, owning your house, you don't want to do that. You should be a renter. You should be a rent, rent, renter. You don't want to own anything. So, of course, we're going to be breaking down the world of Klaus. And then this very interesting article came out from the New York Post this week telling you that, guess what? If you put a little piece of sticky tape over the over the uh, camera lens on your laptop, that could damage your laptop. Don't do that. Don't cover up your camera. Let the FBI spy on you. And that's just a couple of the headlines that slid across my work desk this week. So strap yourself in, grab a tin foil hat, and let's try to make sense of clown world. Welcome back to the Fix The Money, Fix The World YouTube channel. My name is Luke and this is normally the part of the video where I say I make videos on macroeconomics, geopolitics, business investing and of course Bitcoin. But this video is a little bit of a different one. In this video, we're going to be having a look at Clown World, okay? Because everybody sees Clown World and almost every day I open up my phone and I'm like, no way. The, 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 the New York Post did not say that or no, CNN did not say that. But... Every day I'm left even more surprised at just how crazy Clownwood has become. So we're going to make this a little bit of a regular weekly show. Maybe we'll call it uh, Breaking Down Clown World or This Week in Clown World. So starting off with the big news, the US Senate just passed a $739 billion bill titled the Inflation Reduction Act, okay? If anybody's having flashbacks to the early 2000s when the US passed a, uh, a bill called the Patriot Bill, okay? Okay. Remember what was stuffed inside there? Wasn't very patriotic, and I think the very similar thing is happening today. Never trust the name of the bill itself. Always look on the inside or look inside its contents, okay? Never listen to what a man says. Always look at his actions. And let's start breaking down what is inside this huge uh, inflation reduction bill, okay? So, as you actually scroll through the article, it kind of doesn't really say how they're going to reduce inflation at all, okay? So the way that they say they're going to reduce inflation is by forcing people to use unreliable forms of energy, such as solar and wind, okay? We're going to touch on why they're unreliable in such a second. But first, let's have a look at what's really stuffed inside the bill, and that's what I've got highlighted here. So what's in this bill that's actually going to reduce inflation? like our uh, trustworthy governments say. Well, they're claiming that by giving people $7,500 in tax credits to go out there and buy an electric vehicle, that's going to reduce inflation, okay? More on energy in just a second. Uh, but what, I, what this bill is really all about is it's about raising $313 billion in Guess what? New revenue. Where's that new revenue going to come from that the government's going to get its little hands on? Taxes. It's all about taxes, okay? It goes back to that famous quote. Benjamin Franklin said there is nothing more certain in life than death and government taxes, okay? And that's what this bill is all about. It's all about government taxes and trying to force people to use renewable energy, okay? And we've seen this forceful transition fail before, okay? Well, energy prices in Europe have absolutely soared, okay? Europe is the epicenter of this kind of green initiative that the world's been uh, trying to push in to, okay, and you can see what happened energy prices soared because they began using unreliable forms of energy such as solar and wind, okay? When the sun ain't shining and when there's no wind, you got nothing to power your electrical grids. And guess what happens? When Putin has all the oil, he can say, yeah, you know what? You don't follow by my rules. I'm going to cut off the oil because you were stupid enough to <laughs> to uh, try to transition yourself on into unreliable forms of energy. There's just more charts showing that Germany, France, and Italy 
three of the countries in Europe that aggressively sought after trying to be green. Um, look what happened to their energy prices. Absolutely soared, okay? Going through the roof. Everything in Europe is expensive. German power, or whether it's carbon, gas, or coal. Absolutely everything has soared in Europe, okay? Now, that's what happens when you try and force an economy to adopt this quote-unquote green agenda. Uh, this, this little meme here sums it up pretty nicely. Spending $740 billion to fight inflation is just like pouring gasoline onto the fire, okay? It's absolutely absurd what these uh, so-called experts are trying to push through. Um, here you go, you've got... Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank, Neil Kashkari. Most will remember that name from uh, early 2020. He is famous for his uh, little crazy eyes uh, rant that he gave in early 2020, announcing there's an infinite amount of money. There's enough cash in the financial system, and there is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that there's enough cash in the banking system. So don't worry about bank runs. Well, Kashkari here on August 3rd said, it will most likely take several years to return inflation to 2%. And then on August 3rd, Kashkari also said, inflation could still be considered transitory though. Absolutely unbelievable. It takes me back to this meme that pretty much sums everything up, okay? First, they told you inflation was transitory when it first reared its head in 2021. Then they told you inflation was good. Then in January 2022, they said, oh, it's bad, but it's all corporate greed. One of our favorite central planners, Elizabeth Warren, had the absolute audacity to say, yeah, the rising price of fuel that you're paying at the pump, it's all got to do with those greedy corporations, those greedy people running those gas stations. That's why the price of fuel is up absolutely skyrocketing. It has absolutely nothing to do with the amount of money we're printing, okay? It goes back to simple, basic 101 economics. Supply and demand, ladies and gentlemen. If you increase the supply of money while you keep the demand for goods and services the same, what's going to happen when there's more money in the economy and the same amount of goods and services? Prices of the goods and services will rise, okay? And that's exactly what is going on today. So any claim from our central planners that printing money will reduce inflation is absolutely absurd. It's nearly as absurd as the Patriot Act, okay? We're not, we don't have time to go into that. That is for another whole video, that little rabbit hole. But you can see what has happened to the money supply since the year 1914 when the central bank, the Federal Reserve in 1913, okay? The money supply has gone absolutely through the roof, and is it any surprise that when you look at a 400 year chart of inflation, inflation just seems to have gone through the roof in the past 100 years during the same amount of time that the money supply has gone through the roof. Coincidence or are we just all tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists? I'll let you guys be the judge of that one. But moving on to the next hot piece of news that caught my attention for the week. Uh, that's a very interesting article coming out from The Economist. They said Western consumers should put aside their reservations about eating crickets and give plant-based burgers 3D printed steaks and vat grown tuna a try. That's their words from The Economist. And boy, oh boy, that just ties in very nicely to something else that caught my eye this week. And that is our favorite Bond villain, Klaus Schwab, okay? And he is very well known for his little uh, push for trying to make us men eat the bug burgers. But that's not what we're going to be talking about this week. We're going to be talking about the World Economic Forum urging people to give up private ownership of cars. You might be thinking, giving up private ownership of cars, that's a little bit weird, don't you think? But yes, this guy, he's a weird fellow, Klaus Schwab, if you haven't come across him before. He has a number of very, very interesting books, okay? And boy, those books take you down some pretty serious rabbit holes. But focusing in on what we're talking about today, he recently came out on July 18th and he said... We need a clean energy revolution and we need it now. That's his words from a recent article that was titled The Three Circular Economy Approaches to Reduce Demand for Critical Metals. Okay, sounds like a very interesting title of the article. Okay, it goes back to that quote I told you guys at the beginning of the video. Never listen to what they say. Always look at what's hidden. Okay, always look at their actions. Anyway, moving on to the next quote from Klaus. It's all about kind of reducing demand for critical metals. And he says there are three mindset changes that can help reduce demand for critical metals. 
The first of the mindset changes is encouraging people to, I have the quote highlighted, go from owning to using, okay? No, you should not be allowed to own your house. No, you should not be allowed to own your car. Klaus in this article says, everybody should be renting, okay? They should be renting cars and that will reduce the amount of cars in the economy and that will reduce the demand for, guess what? Critical metals. Now, what exactly does he mean by critical metals? So what are these critical metals that our good friend Klaus is talking about? He's talking about lithium, cobalt, and nickel, okay? And they're the three metals that are very, very important in the process of making these batteries for these electric vehicles. And obviously, they're also involved in the production and manufacturing process of these massive wind turbines and solar panels, okay? But the bad thing about these so-called renewable energy sources, okay, is they require a lot of these metals, but Digging a lot of these metals out of the ground destroys the earth, okay? Here's a couple of snapshots from some cobalt um, and some lithium mines, and you can see the mines are absolutely destroyed, okay? We're destroying the earth to dig these things out of the ground to make these kind of renewable uh, energy sources, okay? It's very, very kind of counterproductive, counterintuitive, uh, but it's all on trend from the World Economic Forum. They don't want you to have any sort of private ownership, okay? What they want is, well, they told you themselves. They told you in um, a video that got released in 2020, they said, here's our 10 predictions for the year of 2030. They talked about, you know, we're going to eat less red meat, we're going to use more renewable energy sources, stuff like that. But one of the very interesting predictions was, you will own nothing and you will be happy. That is literally what they said, okay? That's their own words. There's a receipt from their own Twitter account and that's what all of this kind of green push is all about. They want you to use less energy and they want you to own nothing, okay? That's what it's all about. It's all about this chart right here, the Henry Adams curve, and it beautifully shows that as a civilization uses more energy, guess what? It becomes more productive and it lifts people out of poverty. That's exactly what using more energy does, okay? But the globalists don't want you out of poverty, okay? The UN actually had this to say in a recent article. They said, world hunger is a good thing. Nope, I'm not joking. That's a direct quote from the United Nations in a recent article that they had to pull off the internet. There's a video coming on that one in the not too distant future, okay? But um, we should be using more energy. Using more energy is a good thing, okay? And the final little piece of news that I want to hit on today in this little uh, This Week in Clown news is this one here from the New York Post. And boy, I saved the best to last. This is an absolute doozy that came out of the New York Post earlier this week. The, t the article was titled... Covering up the camera could damage your laptop, okay? That's coming from Apple, of course, and we should obviously trust the opinion of Apple. They're a tech expert, right? Okay, everybody trusts the opinion of Apple. We all own an iPhone. I know a lot of people do, but we should actually probably look at the actions of another one of our favorite uh, tech overlords or tech billionaire experts in Mark Zuckerberg himself, because... Who remembers this headline from earlier in the year? Zuckerberg was giving a little uh, interview here for, I think it might have been his Instagram, and he took this profile picture here, but what Zuckerberg didn't know was in the background, he had his own personal laptop sitting on the desk, and you guys can see he had tape over not only the webcam, but also the microphone, okay? So this kind of confirms everything that the tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists have said um, about the um, devices that we hold and use on a daily basis basis, whether it be our laptops or whether it be our phones, okay? You should always know that Big Brother is watching you, okay? Big Brother's always watching you. And that's the last little piece of news I've got for you in this uh, little weekly episode called, uh, maybe we'll call it This Week in Clown World. So before we wrap this video up and give you guys the takeaways, let's quickly hit our uh, beloved Bitcoin-only show sponsors for today's episode. 
So you guys know I'm always talking about the Bitbox O2 hardware wallet. That's because Bitcoin is only a revolutionary asset if you use it the way it's supposed to be used, okay? You constantly hear Bitcoiners say, not your keys, not your coins. And if you have Bitcoin sitting on an exchange, it's not your Bitcoin. If you don't hold the money, it's not your money, okay? So that's why we always talk about not your keys, not your coins. And that's why I recommend you take your Bitcoin off the exchange and put it into a hardware wallet. Um, this sexy and slick little Bitbox O2 hardware wallet is, in my opinion, the easiest hardware wallet to use. It's the cheapest hardware wallet on the market, and it can get even cheaper if you use a promo code Bitcoin Made Simple. That's right, we're giving you guys 5% off this uh, sexy little Bitbox O2 hardware wallet if you use that promo code Bitcoin Made Simple. So I highly recommend you actually go and start using Bitcoin the way it should be used. Now, let's hear from our next show sponsor. Massive thank you to today's show sponsor, Hodling Apparel, who is the best Bitcoin and freedom oriented clothing brand in the space. Trust me guys, I've been in the Bitcoin space for around five years now, and it's very, very difficult to find some high quality Bitcoin clothing. And like me, the two founders of Hodling Apparel were endlessly looking for more wearable, everyday Bitcoin clothing until they realized they could just make their own. And that's exactly what they've done. As you can see on the screen here, guys, they offer a wide range of hats, t-shirts, and sweatshirts for every type of Bitcoiner, male and female, whether they are loud maximalists or low-key sovereign individuals. So whether you're headed to the next Bitcoin conference or family reunion, get yourself some gear at hodlingapparel.com to spread the Bitcoin message in style. Uh, today, guys, you can get 20% off the entire range at Hodling Apparel if you use the promo code BMS20. So that is B. M S 20 that stands for Bitcoin made simple um, and you guys can also get 15% off if it's your first time buying anything at Hodling Apparel. I highly recommend you go and check them out. So what can you guys take away from this little uh, dive into the digital dystopia that we've talked about today in this little weekly episode of uh, This Week in Clown World? Well, uh, the our, our favourite central planners have determined that, yes, printing another $740 billion is going to solve inflation. They've also determined, yes, we're going to force uh, the rest of the world to adopt the same policy policies that Europe adopted, switching to renewable energies, and this is somehow going to lower the price and cost of inflation, okay? That's something else our favorite central planners have said. They want us to eat the bugs, and they're telling you, hey, you know what, you could seriously damage your laptop by putting a little bit of tape just over the webcam, okay? We need to let Big Brother spy on you from everything you do with your laptop. Uh, that's another rabbit hole for another day, but the takeaways from today's video is ignore the central planners, okay? Clown world is a manifestation of the very unique situation we find ourselves living in today, okay? Our world has never transitioned uh, from an analog age into the digital age, um, and this transformation is wreaking havoc on people's minds, okay? The world is going insane, and that is why we're living through a clown world. We're also the, at the end of a 90-year fourth turning cycle and a 250-year revolutionary cycle, um, and that is obviously part of my zoomed-out thesis for what is causing clown world. So if any of that sounds interesting to you guys, uh, be sure to check out the videos that are going to pop up on screen in a moment that kind of talk about all these cycles converging today in the 2020s, and that is what I believe is causing clown world world. And um, if this is something you want to see on maybe a weekly basis, a little check-in on Clown World, um, be sure to leave me a comment down below and say, yep, let's do a weekly uh, a weekly wrap on Clown World. Um, or maybe, you know, focus on the Bitcoin and the macroeconomics. Yeah, tell me either way, guys. I don't mind. Um, but anyway, that's all I've got for this week's episode. If you liked it, be sure to like the video, share it with a friend who's living in Clown World. Let's try to wake these people up, okay? Um, and anyway, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I release my next video. Uh, but anyway, stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video.